What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday, though you guys already know that it's really Tuesday, and I bet you do have to record the day before. So anyway, you guys, um, yes, it is Real Talk Wednesday. Um, I did like the way my um, my last subscriber, my last diva last week called it The Real Talk. Um, and I actually do have an update video or update email from her that I'm going to read during this um, Real Talk. So you guys stay tuned for that. As you guys know, um, I will be leaving tomorrow, which will be Thursday. By the time you watch this video, it will be Wednesday. So I will be leaving early, early, early in the morning. Um, my flight leaves at 6 a.m. So I will be going to New York to visit family. Why is it always so motherfucking noisy in my house? Like, you know something? Let me tell you something. I guess I needed this vacation, like not vacation, but vacation. You know how you just like, I'm going to miss everybody here in the house, but I need to get away. Like seriously, like I just feel like I'm always doing something for everybody. I never have a break. As soon as I'm finished one thing, I'm in doing something else. It seems like every time I turn around, somebody here always need me for something, want something from me, getting on my last nerve. I'm always picking up something. I'm always cleaning up something. It's just like, you know what? Enough is enough. And like, it's great to be a parent, but there comes a time in your life when you just feel like, you know what? Just leave me the fuck alone. And sometimes I really do have to say that. And I, and, and it's not like I mean harm to my kids, but it's like, you know what? Y'all act like I'm a motherfucking robot and my life, like I don't have a life. You, you want to ride, you want some money, you want something, you want to borrow something, or you just ain't doing something you're supposed to do. It's just like, you know what? I Sometimes I just be like ready to go off. Sometimes I just be ready to just pack my own shit the fuck up and move to my own place. Like just me, April, and maybe even my DNA. But I, I'm just like, I'm really happy to get away because I just need this. Like, let me tell y'all, it's not that I stay cooped up in my bedroom. Because I don't, you know what I'm saying? I sit here and I do my work, meaning I edit my videos and I record my videos. And so the, that's why I'm up in my room most of the time. And, and granted, I have a laptop and I'll bring it downstairs. But most of the time, I just like to sit on my desktop and just do my work. Um, but also, when I do go downstairs, I sit in another living room. And I try, I sit in my new living room. I call it my new living room because I got the furniture in July. But I sit there. And I just watch my own TV shows and I make my wigs. And that way I could just have peace of mind. And that's just for me. And granted, I love my grandson. I love my daughter. I love my other daughters. I love my son. But there come a time when you just be like, enough is enough. Like, I'm 43 years old. I get tired of hearing the screaming and the crying, meaning from my grandson. And it's not even crying. It's just like screaming. And I get tired of it. I get tired of picking up the mess behind him. I get tired of a lot of things. And it's like, you know what, April? It's time to go because I just can't take it. And so I come up in my room and I close my door for peace of mind. But sometimes I, I feel like I don't really have to do that all the time. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like sometimes y'all just don't know how to leave me the fuck alone. And there have been times when I just be like, just leave me the fuck alone. Y'all always bothering me for some. Just leave me alone. Even when I come in here to edit my videos, you know what I'm saying? Here come Mumsy. She wanna, oh, can I come in, lay on the bed, watch TV, turn it up loud. You got your own room that you share with your 15-year-old sister. You got two living rooms downstairs and you have to be up in my space. Like, I don't, like, I, I have to tell her to leave me the fuck alone sometimes. And like, as parents, sometimes they just don't get it. Like, leave us the fuck alone sometimes. Like, I love you guys, but y'all feel like I'm a motherfucking robot and like, I don't ever get tired. Tired of you, tired of doing this, tired of doing that. Like... I want to be left the fuck alone sometimes. And so, like, I'm so glad I'm leaving. Like, for 10 days, that's a long time, but it ain't long enough. Like, on some, some real shit, like, it's not that I don't want to come back because I do, but I just need to get away. Like, I, I don't know what else to say. To Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm constantly, like, clean up the house, clean this, do this, do this, do this. And, like, I can't deal with it. Why don't you look for a job? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Like, and here's the thing, when I leave, 
what y'all gonna do? Call me because y'all need a ride? Like, well, could you send me a cab? Could you send me a Lyft? Could you send me an Uber? You know what I'm saying? Because I have free rides or discounts on my account because you're not driving my cars. That's not going to happen because neither one of y'all have a license. So my keys will come with me or they'll be with my friend Devin. But it's like, you know what? <sighs> Whenever I go somewhere, I'm always getting a phone call or text message. Ma, can I borrow your such and such? Ma, can you give me a lift? Like, I just need to be left the fuck alone. Like, leave me alone. All right. I think I do more than enough. And this is just my time, my vacation, go see my man, go see my mother, go see my son, go see my grandson there, and just be left the fuck alone. Now, granted, I don't really like flying like that, but I have flown enough times. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. So my plane leaves at 5.50 or 6 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, um, the 18th. Listen. A bitch will be fucking ready, okay? I'm going to pack my stuff up tonight, meaning Tuesday. And, and I'm going to put it in a nice size suitcase because I'm taking Southwest. And you know you get free luggage up to 50 pounds. Uh, two free bags. I don't need two. But I'm just saying. I might have one big one and one little one with my, um, my wig in it and stuff. You know what I'm saying? My wigs and stuff. But I don't be willing to carry all that stuff because I don't be into carrying all that stuff. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen. A girl is ready to get the fuck up out of here, okay? I can hear the, the screaming and the crying right now. Like, literally. That's why I'm like, why is my house always noisy? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's not even like a cry. It's like, if you don't get what you want, you screaming. Like, come on. You ain't, you, you ain't got... There's, a, there's not a tear in the motherfucking building. It's all dry eye. And like, I can't take it no more. Like, I have two grandkids, two grandsons, and I just can't take it no more. Like, I need you to move out in your own shit and come visit me because I can't take this all the time. And I'm not the only one that feels this way. But I'm trying to be very, very patient. Do you understand me? Like, when I say very patient, uber patient. Okay? Uber patient. But anyway... So enough of my ranting. So today I got on my new wig. This is the wig that I had made using March Queen here. Let me tell y'all something. You know I had to fight to get the color back to this because I had put in some hair dye and it just didn't look good at all. Like, you know, I was doing the streaks and it just looked horrible. Like, the hair dye was like a medium ash brown and it turned purplish dark brown because here come my son wanting something from me. You know what I'm saying? So this is the shit that I have to go through here. And I'm and I'm hearing the screaming and I'm just ready to get the fuck up out of here. So anyway... Yes, this hair, I have to strip it, like strip the dye out of it using, first I had to sit the hair in like hot, hot water, and the dye just came running out, and then I had to use vitamin C pills and um, head and shoulders, but I used the, um, the Walmart equivalent brand, we quit, I used that um, for it, and the hair, the, it just came back this color, so it's like little, a little bit of streaks in there, it's nothing really noticeable like that, but here's the thing about it. No matter how much fucking hairspray I put in this shit, it just will not, like, get hard. Like, seriously, like, I, you know, I love my Aussie Instant Freeze. And it that shit will make all your hair freeze in spot. You know what I'm saying? And make it freeze in place. But I don't know if it's because it's got vitamin C pills in it or all that shampoo I had to put in it or what. But this shit is just like, bitch, I'm not going to get hard. And no, I'm not going to hold a curl like that for you. So I went back to my old school shit, which I've been using forever. And if you guys know me really well, like from my old channels, then you know that I was like the number one fan of Pump It Up, okay? I went to the beauty supply store and I bought this. Super hold. This is what I always buy. Or bought, rather. Instantly freezes hair in place. Now, it did freeze it in place, but, you know, I had to brush it out because the curls was a little bit too tight because I had to just curl it. Why does it feel like it just went limp? Like, it's not even hard. Like, I like it to be. And on top of that, I don't know. I know you guys are probably like, it looks like the other one. It really doesn't. The other one is parted on the left side, which is no big deal. But, and it's also a little bit longer. No big deal. And a little bit fuller. That ain't even an issue. And it's funny that it's fuller because it's the same amount of bundles, which is four. The issue is it doesn't curl like the other one. Like, I don't know what it what it is maybe it's because i have it parted on the opposite side i don't fucking know but you know what i'm saying it's like driving me insane and for some reason i really really want to like this one just as much as my other one 
But for some reason, I'm just still gravitating to the other one still. And like, don't get me wrong. I do like this wig. I do. But I don't think it can replace my original. Like, seriously, I really don't think it can replace my original. And what do you guys think? Like, seriously, like, you know, I, I need to know what you guys think about this one. Like, for some reason, like, I just really do like my other one. The way it lays and stuff is just, like, totally different. And it might have to do with the fact that I have it parted on the opposite side. That might just be what it is, you know, because I normally wear my hair parted on this side. And for some reason... Even though it's just a same, different part or different side, why does my forehead just feel like it looks bigger? I don't, I, I think I'm going crazy. And I'm trying to debate which wig I should wear on the plane. Should it be this one or my other blonde one? Or my plat, not even my platinum blonde one, because I don't want to wear that one on the plane. Um, but I will take it with me. Um, or my synthetic one that everybody's been asking me about in like one of my recent videos. Um, I do like this one and my other one, my other blonde one, I do love, but I'm so undecided. Okay. I'm just very, very undecided and I'm wondering, does it look bad? You know, cause I, listen, I want to get off the motherfucking plane cause you know, my husband's going to be standing there waiting for me. I want to get off the motherfucking plane and he look at me and be like, God damn, I want to take her home and just throw her on the bed. That's what I want him to look at me and feel. You know what I'm saying? Next to I love her so much, like he always tells me, but I just want him to look at me and just be like, God damn, I'm gonna take her. You know what I'm saying? Like Chris Brown said, take me down, take you down, whatever. That's how I want him to feel. I want him to just feel that and I want him to see that and I want him to be like, damn, I really miss her. Because he does, but I need him to feel this way when I get off the plane. You understand me? I really do. So anyway, um, I'm just so undecided. Like, do you guys like this hair? Does it look like my other blonde one? Does it make my forehead look bigger? Like, I don't, I just don't know what to do. Like, seriously, I don't know what to do. But anyway, so yeah, I got this. And look, it's still not hard like I like it. I'm just like, ugh, I'm so undecided. Also, you guys know how much I love Oxley. I love getting free shit all the time, honeys. So I didn't do a makeup tutorial, but I just want to talk about this. Because normally what I'll do in the video is I will show you guys while I'm doing my makeup with the product. But I'm late on this product. I've seen it out a while and I've been meaning to get some. But sometimes a girl be so cheap. Like $20 is not a lot, but it can be a lot. Especially when you have makeup already and you just want to use it up. Or not even use it up, but you want to utilize it, okay? Anyway... Um, Octoly, as you guys know, Octoly is a, is an online, um, source where you, free store where you can get free products to review or, uh, review on YouTube or also social media, Instagram. Now I'm not really sure how many followers you need to have on Instagram. I don't really think it's a lot, but you get these free products to choose from and you get coins. So I have like nine coins so I can get nine different things. And each time I order, each time I review some, I get another coin back. When you begin and when you start off, I think you get like five coins or something like that. I can't really remember, but, um, oh, my lashes, it's definitely not nine. Okay. So anyway, um, they always have like this really great stuff on it. And sometimes my store may look a little bit different from your store, meaning uh, my store, I say, I see Issa Laurent, I see MAC, I see Urban Decay, I see Becca Cosmetics, you know what I'm saying? And then people who have just started out doing videos or reviewing for them, you might not see that. You probably won't see it. You, you, you'll you see stuff like um, Kiss Professional, Cover Girl, Wet and Wild, Stuff like that. And that's how everybody starts off. And I was fine with that makeup too because, hey, it's all free shit and I like free stuff. So I would definitely post their link below for you guys. But so anyway, like I was saying, I'm late on this. But, um, and like I said, I was just trying to utilize what I had. And sometimes I've already used so much stuff that it just, I'm like, you know what? I've used that same thing, but in a different brand. Never mind. So I know I'm late on this, like I said. So anyway, but bam. Okay, let me let me let me let me let, let it focus for a second. Okay, hopefully it will. Yes, but bam. Okay, Sasha Buttercup setting powder. Okay, so first of all, let me tell y'all, I have been wanting to get this for like the longest. 
But it was, like I said, $20. And then I already felt like I had been nigh um, banana powder. So I'm just going to skip on this maybe because the Ben Nye, it's a yellowish color and it really didn't do anything for me, but make me look like I had like dry skin and jaundice like right here where you would, you know, set your face out, your, your, um, your stuff. And everybody that I've seen on YouTube with the Sasha Buttercup setting powder was the same exact powder color as the Ben Nye one, that yellowish tone. Well, anyway, listen, let me tell y'all, as I was on Octoly trolling, not scrolling, but trolling. I seen this and I seen the buttercup and I said, you know what? Let me just try this. I'm going to try this now because I can get it for free if they accept me. You know what I'm saying? And if it gives me John, there's no big deal because it was for free. Honey, why was I so happy that they had one in my shade, Buttercup Light? Now, see, I did not know they had a Buttercup Light. I just thought they had the regular Buttercup, which was that yellowish one, like the banana powder from Ben Nye. No, it was the light. So a girl hurried up and, you know, put in her request to review this and got the light. Let me tell y'all something. Now, normally when I do set my makeup, it was, it's always with a very light one because, you know, I'm already light. So that yellowish one is not really good for me. Not too much white because I just can't do all setting powders because some of them give me like this horrible flashback and or some of them just make me look really chalky and jaundice like. So that's why I like to use my Givenchy one, which is a lavender color. Works perfect. Not the Becca one, that blur one, that pink one. Didn't really work that great for me. And neither did like the NYX one or whatever. But this one, girl, when I run out of this, you definitely going to best believe I'm going to get some more of this. This stuff is like heaven in a little sifter jar. Like seriously, it has been working so well for me. It has not given me jaundice, has not given me flashback. It's also made me look like a really, really good. And it has helped my highlights stay on all day. Like, you know, the concealer part. So I'm really loving this. But the whole fact is that it came in a lighter version. Like I didn't even know that. Now, I don't really know if it comes in buttercup brown or buttercup medium because of course, our brown skin girls like my daughter Tati she doesn't use um the yellow anymore like the banana banana because it gives her like this other color that she doesn't really like so she uses like a lighter color um like a more like she would use her 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 setting powder is the color of my skin tone you know what I'm saying it's like a very light brown which works well for her um, but this, I really do like this product. Plus the packaging, packaging is so unique. I do like them. And what's so funny about Sasha, let me tell you, on my very first channel for YouTube, this was when they first started out. They sent me loads of makeup, which I still have today. Packaging is totally different, but, um, they weren't really in the United States. They were, you know, you know, an island company or Trinidad, I think, um, like, Jamaican company or whatever, but, um, Eastern Indian, Western Indians or whatever, but they sent me a ton load of makeup and I really am impressed with this buttercup. This stuff works amazing. And then also I did get this from them, which is their mattifying face primer. Now, let me tell y'all when I, when I seen that it says mattifier face primer, I automatically assumed that it was going to be like the Becca cosmetics one that, um, it's if you have oily skin and mattifiers. I thought it was going to be like that silicone texture. Also like the Kiss Professional one that I rave about that I always use. That's the same type of texture. This is nowhere near that texture, which kind of like shocked me because I was just like, um, is this even going to work? Because it looked more or less like a lotion like. So this is what it looks like in the, um, in the flesh. Really cute. The packaging is nice and sleek and black, and I love like black packaging. But I also do like colorful stuff too. And it's more or less like a lotion consistency, which is cool because it's a lot easier to um, distribute, you know, like rub into your skin, which I, I like. Now I did use it twice. I used it twice, and to be honest, it does mattify because look at that. Um, you can't see, but it actually does mattify. Like my hand was kind of shiny right here. And once you rub it in, it does mattify. So it's a little bit softer on your skin. It's not as thick as the silicone one, which will actually kind of make me hot and fleshy after a while. Not even fleshy, but it'll just make me hot. And when you get hot, what, do you, what happens? You get oily. So this one does give a 
nice mattifying, you know, finish. And it also makes your skin like a nice texture for your canvas, like for doing your makeup. So as I was saying, I used it twice, only used it twice. And I actually forgot to use it today because I used my Estee Laurent blurring um, primer, which I do like now. Remember I was saying it's kind of too oily. It actually is good for me. It doesn't, it, it makes my makeup stand all day. But like I said, I used it twice. And the one day that I did use it, I noticed that my makeup was still on. I didn't even think about this. All I just looked at my face was like, oh, girl, your makeup is still looking good. And I was kind of happy. I didn't, I didn't think any further about it. I didn't think about it. it was this. I just felt happy. And it probably was most definitely this. So I'm not really sure the price point, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot cheaper than that Becca Cosmetics one, which is like 40 something dollars that I returned. Um, and I do like it as on the threshold of Kiss Professional and Sasha. I would say that they both work just amazing. So yeah, that was about it. So you guys, let's get into this real talk because I think I've wasted enough of your time. 20 minutes is a long time of me gabbing. So if you want to real talk about your life situation, you can definitely leave me a email at muffinismylovers2012. Make sure you put in the subject line real talk. And if you want to change the names of your people or your party or your friends or family who you're talking about or yourself, go ahead and let me know in the email that I changed the names already. And if you haven't done that and you haven't changed the names or haven't told me, I'm just going to automatically assume you did, or I might automatically assume you did it and change it myself. But either way, make sure you send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 and put subject line real talk. Now, keep in mind, this is real talk. I'm not telling you to go jump out a window. Whatever I tell you is just my biased opinion, my opinion, okay? Just how I feel. I'm not telling you to do anything that you don't want to do, but you ask me for advice or you ask me how I felt about it, and I'm telling you. So on that note, let's get into this real talk. Huh? 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 Okay, you guys, remember last week when we did the real talk and um, ugh, these lashes, I just put some new lashes in, you know, I'm getting ready for my trip and stuff. Um, we did real talk and the young lady who I spoke about, she had a husband who basically, um, she came from another country, her and her daughter and her husband, he sent for her and her daughter. And as soon as she got a job or basically she found, um, she started running her own cleaning business before prior to that, he was giving her, um, like allowance and stuff. And then she started um, working and then she opened up her own cleaning business. And then what he did was he quit his job. Now, mind you, remember he does have have tenants that live downstairs that um, pay the rent, which uh, and allow him to pay the mortgage and all the bills. So he basically quit work, has gotten real lazy. Um, she's been paying whatever bills he don't want to pay, paying the phone bill. And basically she's just very upset. She's tired of him. She doesn't want to be there. You know, she, she wants to get her own. If you don't remember that video, I'll definitely link it below for you guys because it was from last week. Um, and I did inform her like, you know, you need to go get your own phone line and you need to move out. You know, you don't need to be anywhere where you're not appreciated, anywhere where you don't want to be, anywhere that someone is making you and your child miserable. Like, I know life is short and everybody want to be happy and in love. But let me tell you something. If I'm not appreciated, I'm definitely going to leave. So the thing is with that is he helped her get her green card because you know she became she moved here from another country and that's more or less they sponsor you so he sponsored her and his her daughter however he might have helped her in some sort of way get her green card but he didn't give that shit to her so it's not like she owes him any debt you know what i'm saying and i needed her to understand that like it's one thing when you know someone is helping you and they're helping you get on your feet but when they use that to to, to their ability it's not right you know what I'm saying? That's just like if you were homeless and I let you come stay with me because you had nowhere to go. But then as you lived with me, slept in my couch or in another room, I started badgering you and using you and making you do everything. That's not right. You don't do people like that. You don't you don't treat them like a dog because they need a handout. That's not how you do people. And that's basically how I felt like he did her. Well, she watched the video and she did send me an email. And this is an update. And I'm going to respond to this. Okay. Dear Miss April, good day to you again. I just wanted to thank you for all your advice. I listened to you last week and I really looked into my life. That same afternoon after I left work, I went to T-Mobile and I switched my phone network. My phone was already unlocked, so it was easy to switch. I was able to get an unlimited plan for myself. That following week, the phone bill was due. 
and I didn't pay that bill. So on Sunday, I heard my husband saying that his phone was not working and I just smiled to myself. A few hours after that, I was on the road and he used the house phone to call me, cursing me. How can I answer him on my phone and his phone is cut off? I told him I switched phone companies and he had the nerve to ask, why didn't I switch his phone to? I told him that he needs to pay his own bill or change to a different company. And we ended up arguing the whole night, but I didn't care anymore. I am so tired of his foolishness. I'm saving money because I don't want him to put me and my daughter out. I am online all the time looking at foreclosed homes. And the only thing is that I might have to relocate if I get one of those homes. I am currently living in Maryland, but the houses that I'm looking at are in Pennsylvania. I am a fighter who is willing to work to the end. But the thing is, I clean in Washington, D.C., which is 20 minutes away from me. And my business is doing great. But the rent here murders is murder. And I would just rather prefer owning something for myself. I am confused and scared a bit. I only have my daughter here and my husband. I have no friends or family here. So I have to stand strong for my daughter. I am trying to, I am trying to build my credit score. And that's why I got the car. My question to you is, do you think I should wait until my credit bills then get a house here? I know that may take years and in the meantime, I should go rent somewhere or go for the foreclosure and relocate and start all over. Please help me. I'm so confused. It's so hard for me and I don't know anyone except the people I clean for and I don't think they have time to hear my family problems. So thank you. I really enjoy the real talk. I know it takes time and effort to do it with your busy schedule. I enjoy everything you do in loving your children and grandkids. I wish you all the best in life and a great 2018. Thanks once again, once more, Mitzi. So she goes by the name Mitzi. And as you guys can see, she's let she let her husband know, okay? She let this motherfucker know that he needs to get his own phone bill or his own phone plan or pay his bill, okay? That's what's up. Like, you know what? I'm not I'm not all for being a gold digger, but here's the thing. We if we are together, we're gonna split the cost together. You're not gonna sit around, put your feet up. And then on top of that, when he does go help her clean homes, which is very rare, he expects her to pay him or take him to lunch and pay him. First of all, the money that I'm making here is to pay the bills in our home because you decided to stop working because you want me to take care of you now. It don't work like that. Okay? It does not work like that. My thing is this, we work together as a team, but he ain't about being a team. To me, it was more or less he got her over here to use her and to get what he could get out of her. She don't want to have sex with him. She don't even want to be bothered with him. So I'm happy for her that she's went ahead and shut his phone off because listen, let me tell you something. I'm not about to pay my phone bill and car insurance, your car insurance, the electric bill, the water bill, and you sit around and twiddle your thumbs or play with yourself. That's not about to happen. So she cut his phone off and got her own unlimited plan through T-Mobile and that's what's up. Now here's the kicker. She's been saving up her money and she's been trying to build her credit. She got a car and that's how she's been trying to build up her credit. But also, she's been looking at foreclosed homes and the majority of all of the foreclosed homes she's looking at are in Pennsylvania because the prices are cheaper. She lives in Maryland. Where she cleans at is in Washington, which is 20 minutes um, away from her home. So she's trying to figure out if she should just move and move to, move to Pennsylvania and purchase a foreclosed home or keep building her credit and wait a few years and then buy her own home and just rent apartment out in um, Maryland. But the rent is high, but she, I guess for buying a house. Here's my thing, Mitzi. And this is just how I feel about it. Excuse me, because this freaking eyelash is driving me insane. Okay. If it were me, now I know that you have no friends, you have no family, it's just you and your daughter. And I don't even want to say your husband because he's not a husband. He's a jerk. He's an asshole. But Basically, the only person you have is your daughter, not your husband. Because you just said, the only people I have is my daughter and my husband. You don't have your husband because he's not there for you. So you have your daughter. Um, and your daughter needs you. Me, personally, now it's great to have your own home. It's great to own your own anything. It's great to own your own anything. Whether it be a, a, a couch set, some clothes, some dishes, a motherfucking bike, motorcycle, car, whatever. It's great to own your own. But sometimes we not equipped for that. It's not our time to own a home. You understand what I'm saying? Like the home that I live in, I don't own it. I've been renting this home since I've moved here for four and a half years. Would I like to own my own home? I definitely would. But then sometimes I have to sit back and think, well, you know what, April? 
you don't have the best credit. However, even if you did go out and buy a house, you could still get one, but you have to stop and think all of the maintenance and things that you need to put into a home, especially if something goes wrong. So say I'm sitting here and it's just me and my kids, just like it's just you, Mitzi, and your daughter. Something goes wrong, like the hot water tank goes out. What if I don't have the money to fix it? I'm screwed, okay? What if the pipes bust? I'm screwed. This is the convenience that I like about renting a home because for one, if that shit happens, I just call up the um, the rental agency or whatever you call it, um, management company, excuse me, and they send their people to fix it and I don't, I don't get charged for it. Okay. When my pipes, when my pipe busted a few weeks ago, like it, not even busted, but you know, it was messed up. It was drained. It was clogged. I had a big flood in my kitchen because of that. I didn't have to pay for the plumber and all of that work that they had to do. That was them. That was the management rental company that had to send their people out and fix it. So that's what I like about that. I don't have to worry about going out of my pocket, especially if I didn't have it. Now, don't get me wrong. I would love to own my own home. However, there comes a time in everybody's life when it's going to be the right time. And right now you have just started your business. You have just bought your car and you are trying to build your credit. Never give yourself more than you can fucking handle. Don't bite off more than you can chew. You understand what I'm saying? Time. It's all about time. It took you time to get here to America. It's going to take you time. It's all about baby steps. Sometimes when we rush too much to do stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like we rush, we rush, we rush. That shit don't pan out for us. That shit do not pan out. And then we end up with a fucked up situation. So even though you want your own home, you have to think and you have to think about many things. If you buy your own home in Pennsylvania, a foreclosed home, that means that you have to build your business up again from scratch. And foreclosed homes sometimes mean things can go wrong with them. Something may be wrong inside of them. Something might be broken. You might have to do some maintenance on it. So you out in Pennsylvania, you just bought this new foreclosed home. Your business was, was in Maryland, but you're not there anymore. So now you have to start from scratch here. And every bit of money that you did save, you have to use it to pay your bills, pay your car note, and buy food and stuff for you and your daughter. Why would you put yourself in the burning fire? My thing is this. It's you and your daughter right now. You don't have no more but then one child. It's okay to rent an apartment because when you live in an apartment, whatever goes wrong with that apartment, it's up to management to fix it for you. And sometimes we got to allow other people to do stuff for us because when we have too much on our plate, bitch, we get real full and we can't handle that shit. How do you think I feel sometimes? Yeah, granted, I would love to own my own house, but my time will come when it's my time. You feel me? Some things are not meant to be for that particular time. And on top of that, I would never want to put myself in a situation where I would struggle. So for me, my honest opinion, Mitzi, would be for you to keep building your credit score up and keep saving your money. Because for one, you just started your business. So it's a very new business and it's flourishing, which is great. Sometimes businesses don't take off rocket science. Rocket science, they don't always take off, but it's flourishing business. And why I have to up and move so quickly? Up and move, yeah. Up and move out of your husband's house and move into an apartment where you and your daughter will be comfortable and safe. You know what I'm saying? Comfortable, safe, and happy. Okay? And you can still run your business and you can still maintain life and you'll be okay. And then when the time comes, you never know. You might find some foreclosed homes in Maryland where you'd be able to afford it. You never know what's down the road in the future, but you don't have to rush, 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 rush into things, especially because we got this donkey on the other side who's just fucking verbally abusive, financially abusive, mentally abusive. He's just a fucking plain asshole. We don't have to rush on, on account of him. You know what I'm saying? Because his bad decision, his bad decision don't mean you have to make a bad decision. Meaning his bad decision to treat you like shit don't mean you have to make a bad decision in life and go ahead and go forward. You don't want to get somewhere and they have to start all over. But when you start all over, it's really hard. Like for me, when I moved here, I saved up. I froze my bank account. So the only thing I could do was put money in. And I would live off of $20 a week or two weeks. You know what I'm saying? I worked from home. I had a job. I worked from home. Um, I was making wigs and I was saving all my money and I would work from home 
And so I wouldn't go anywhere. I didn't have any friends anyway, but I wouldn't go anywhere. I would just stay in the house. I would work, 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 sell wigs, make wigs, work, 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 do videos, get paid, work, work, work. And I just kept stacking my money, stacking my money until I was able to move here. And so when I first moved here, it wasn't peaches and cream, but I had money. You know what I'm saying? I have money and I rented the house and I'm and I and I was okay. And it was an adjustment period for me. You know what I'm saying? So right now, Mitzi, you're still adjusting to the United States. You've been here for like I think you said four years. It's still an adjustment period. Don't hop off into another state. Get comfortable here in Maryland first before you decide to move. Weigh out your options. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you never know. You may find something down the road to where you don't have to up and move. But I just think, in my opinion, that Everybody wants to own something. It doesn't matter what it is, but we all have a time. When it's our time, it will be our time. And never rush into something because you feel like it's the last resort. And never be afraid. You know what I'm saying? If you if you have to if you feel afraid of doing something, then don't do it. But the one thing that I will tell you, don't stick around with your husband and feel like anything is gonna get better. And don't feel like you gotta stay with your husband and build your credit and save your money. What you need to do is Look for an apartment. Look for an affordable apartment. That way you can save more money for you and your daughter. An affordable apartment. It could be a one bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Where your daughter gets the bedroom and you stay in the living room. You can put up like a little divider. You know what I'm saying? The more money you can save, the better it is for you. You understand me? Sometimes we have to make sacrifices and that's the sacrifice right there. The sacrifice that I, I, I would never suggest for you to just up and move by foreclosed home and go to Pennsylvania. Then you got you to gotta build your name. You got to build your business out there, okay? And some parts of Pennsylvania is not the best. Trust me, my dad is from there. Some, some of those places in Pennsylvania are really slow and quiet and country town. And it's like, okay, did I really make the right decision? And then you regret it, okay? So what I would do is I would definitely allow my business to flourish more before buying any home. You, know, you feel me? Before buying any home, I would definitely let my business flourish more. And then I would think about it. Time flies so quick, you will never know. Within a few years from now, you might be buying a home in Maryland, and you'll be so happy. But the one suggestion I will tell you is stay where you're at, make the best of it, meaning stay in Maryland, find yourself an apartment for you and your daughter, and make the best of it, and then build yourself up, and build your confidence up, and build your business up, and build your bank account the fuck up, and tell that motherfucker over there to kick rocks, okay? I'm just saying. So, let Mitzi know what you guys would do, okay? So, now we're going to move on to the next. And I apologize, guys, if I'm chewing the gum. You know, I went back on taking my medication for um my weight. So, it makes your mouth dry. So, I do apologize. So, hi, Miss April. Let's start off by saying I love you. Your show and girl, you should have a talk show. For real, for real, 100. You can call me Anna, and I have a problem. I'm going to school for registered nursing to be a pediatric nurse. This is already my second year of college, and I am 20 years old right now, and to be honest, I feel lost. All my grades are looking great except biology, and I, got a, and I have a D in biology. I tried talking to my friends, and they stated just retake the class or take online since all of my online classes, I have an A. I said, okay. When I asked my mother what should I do, she stated, I don't know. Why are you still trying to be in this nursing field? I was really hurt because ever since I was in elementary school, she never really believed me or believed in me. When I said I wanted to be in the medical field working with children, I always tried to get her to look at my viewpoint and perspective, but it never worked. She just glorifies my older brother who dropped out of college and, to be honest, is not going back anytime soon. My older brother, let's call him Alex, works at Wendy's for years, and although he is a he is very artistic, he never searched for any college for his art, nor wants to use his art for anything. All he does is work a lot of days at Wendy's and buy his clothes and listen to music on YouTube. That's it. My mom still glorifies him by speaking highly of him to others. Hell, my mom co-work my hell, my mom co-workers didn't know she had a daughter until I went up there to drop off her lunch since she forgot it at home. They were shocked because she never mentioned me. I don't know what to do, Miss April. I tried talking to my mom and she never listens nor cares. I'm even paying college by grants and never any and never asked her, her for any I'm even paying my college tuition by grants and never asked her for anything since I've been in college. Please help. Love Anna. Well damn. 
So Anna's 21, 20 years old. This is her second year of college. She wants to go to school, be a pediatric nurse, okay? Um, but she's been getting a D in biology, and her friends are suggesting that she take online courses since all of her other classes are online, and she's been getting A in those classes. But when she goes to her mom and talks to her mom about it, her mom is just basically like, I don't know what you're asking me for. I don't understand why you're still taking these classes. Are you still trying to fulfill being a pediatric nurse? Meanwhile, she got her brother who lives at home, who is a dropout, um, works at Wendy's, listens to music all day, probably smokes weed, buys clothes, and don't do shit, but her mother glorifies him and brags about him to everybody. Until um, Anada went to her mom's job one day and brought her mom her lunch and she left at home and people were looking at her probably like with five heads, like, who the fuck is you? Until she had to tell him, I'm her daughter. And everybody's like, oh, we didn't know she had a daughter. She never mentioned you. First of all, how that would make me feel would be make me feel like, okay, um, total shit. But let me tell you something, Anna. I understand that's your mom and all. We want, we, we love our parents' opinions. We love to get our parents' intake and just friends and family's intake on certain situations and certain things that we have to do in life. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes we gotta let that shit go. Meaning, if your mom has never taken an interest in anything that you have done, especially since elementary school, of you telling her that you wanted to be a pediatric nurse, then she's not gonna take an interest in it now. Don't force it on her and don't force it on yourself. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do what's best for you. If she's not interested in what you're doing for yourself, then you do it for you. If your brother want to continue to flip burgers at motherfucking Wendy's and make little, um, make shakes and shit like that, Frosties, then let him continue to do that. Because it seems like if he's on his path by buying clothes and listening to music on YouTube, then he's going to continuously live with your mother. And that's just how it is, unfortunately. I don't know if he's, he's older than you. But she glorifies him, maybe because he's the boy and she feels like you're supposed to be stronger. But here's the thing. We're going to be stronger in this situation and stop asking her for her input and stop asking her for her, um, her, her feelings on how you, do, how you, how you live your life or how you do things. I get it. My mom, you know what I'm saying? They're not always out for our best interest parents. And I, I don't say that in a bad way and I don't say it in a good way, but sometimes you know, they're stuck in their own world and they just want to get what they can get from what they can get. You know, understand what I'm saying? Meaning they want you to do what they want you to do. And if they can get something out of it, they can get something out of it. And that's not with all parents. That's just for the ones that really don't care for their kids or are only in it for certain reasons. Now, I'm not really sure what your brother is doing for your mom, but bringing her leftovers from Wendy's because you didn't say he paid no motherfucking bills. And if he do pay bills, then that's great. Hallelujah. Because he ought to because he's a grown up. However, here's the thing. You 20 years old, honey. You've been in college for two years. You taking up being a pediatric nurse. Fuck everybody else, meaning your mom. Don't when I say fuck her, I don't mean like fuck her, dis disrespect her, but fuck how she feels about your career, your righteous path, your positivity. Okay, if that's how she feels, then you know something. You have to leave it alone. Like with me. I don't like drama in my life, so I stay away from people that just cause drama or give me a motherfucking headache or make me feel some type of way about shit. I stay away from those type of people because, for one, I don't have time for it, and for two, I'm not going to allow you to piss me the fuck off. So what do I do? I keep to myself, and I stay, and I stir away from drama. I really don't ask people's to, um, opinion too much about what I should do or how I should live my life or what I should do as a career goal because, you know what, I'm probably not going to want to hear what they're going to say, and I'm probably going to want to do what I want to do. What I feel you should do is if you're getting A's on online classes, then continue to do that. Maybe try it with biology. Sometimes when we're outside and outside of the zone, and you know what I'm saying? And we're around a lot of people. Sometimes it doesn't work out for us like that. Like I know with me, when I was going to high school, I wasn't really that great in a huge class setting. I, I wasn't paying attention. My grades were kind of slipping. They weren't that great. But when I went to like an outreach program school where there was only like six of us in the class and I went to that school because I got kicked out of school for fighting, but I was able to build up my grades and get better grades. And I was, it was, it was easier for me. You know what I'm saying? So with me, I was able to do more and I was able to concentrate more in a smaller setting. That's just the same thing like when um, I went to get my GED. I had to teach myself to get my GED. I did my GED through the library, meaning every two weeks I would go and I would pick up this packet and I would do my work. My teacher would give me work and I would do it. And that's how I learned. You know what I'm saying? I learned on my own. Sometimes we learn a lot better on our own versus 
sitting there with a whole bunch of people. Sometimes it could be very distracting. And if you're getting A's on your other classes and they're all online, then maybe you should give this a try. Biology online. You never know. You can't you can't knock it until you try it. You know what I'm saying? So I would definitely give that a chance. But as far as your mom, listen, you gotta let her go. She older, she's set in her way. She's gonna do what she wanna do. She's gonna think the way she wanna think. But don't let the way she think fuck up your feelings and fuck up your motivation. If you want to be a pediatric nurse, girl, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Because when you do become that pediatric nurse, then what? She going to go out there and brag to everybody. Oh, you see my daughter. She's a nurse or she's a pediatric doctor. Uh, and that's when she's going to brag about you. But you didn't think about me all that time. It's unfortunate that you're a female and you need her in your life. But sometimes those people that we need the most are those that hurt us the most. And I can totally get it, and I understand that what she said to you hurts because you come to your mother and you asking her, what's her input, what's her thoughts, how does she feel about it? And she she could care less. That just shows that to you, it's probably like you don't have no interest in me, but you got interest in a boy who worked at Wendy's. Not knocking his job because he got a motherfucking job, but here's the thing. He ain't really doing anything positive for himself, but listening to music, buying school clothes, or buy, oh, excuse me, buying clothes and working at Wendy's. So he worked at Wendy's all them hours just to buy motherfucking clothes and listen to music all day. That's that's so whack. And as long as your mother allows him to do that and glorify him, he's going to continue to do that. So here's the thing, Anna. Don't worry about your mom's relationship with your brother. That's none of your concern. Because as long as you continue to allow, as long as you continue to make it your concern and stress yourself out about it, then you are going to be heading into the wrong path. You know what I'm saying? And you ain't going to concentrate on what the fuck Anna needs to do. What Anna needs to do is this. Go ahead online and do your biology and go ahead and get your fucking degree or whatever you want to call it to become a pediatric nurse. And let everybody in your household know I did this shit on my motherfucking own without the help and support of anybody. It sucks when you don't get support from people. But you know something? Those be the times when they make you the strongest. You feel me? Like, I'm going to say this. When I moved here, ain't nobody want me to move here. Meaning my friend that I did have in Schenectady. She didn't want me to move here. She was trying to knock it like, oh, you shouldn't go. This could happen. Just giving me negative vibes. Even my own mother was saying the same thing. Like, I don't know why you're moving there for in the first place. Uh, you don't even know what it's like. Like, sh you just need to stay where you at. It's negative. I've, I've heard enough negativity from, like, several people. And you want me to stay in this town where there's nothing? Like, there's nothing in this town. It's so depressing. There's no sunlight. It's depressing. Schenectady, New York. Look it up. Schenectady, New York. It's depressing. Okay? Not and I, you know, what I'm saying like, I don't mind going to visit, but it's not like the highlight of my motherfucking life. Like I would rather not. But it's connected to New York. Like, listen, you can't knock something until you try it, and that's how I felt. Like I almost allowed my mom and my friend and other people to tear me from moving here. You know what I'm saying? Like really tell, really get to me. Like you know what? Well. I'm going to just stay in this little tiny house that I live in, really tiny little house that I live in, and make the best of it. Even though there's no jobs out here and there's nothing for me out here, I'm going to just try to make the best of it. In this little slouchy town, I'm going to just try to make the best of it. But you know what? I said, you know what? Fuck them. Not even th that it was a fuck them, but you know what? I'm going to do this. Just because y'all scared to move out of the town or move from where you at doesn't mean that I have to be. And a lot of times people are afraid of, you know... Not the, the not knowing, you know what I'm saying? Just like with your mom. She's probably afraid of not knowing what you're going to become. Maybe if you become something really important or do something with your stuff, you might not be there for her. Now, she got this son that lived with her that works at Wendy's. He need her. And she probably feels good knowing that he's going to be there because she, she knows that. He's going to be there to help her and she's not going to be alone. Now, here it is. You, you've gone and out. You've done something with yourself. You don't really rely on her like you said. You don't need her. So people fear the not knowing. And like, it's a process in life for everything. Like if I would have just listened to everybody and not moved, I would have probably been miserable in Schenectady, New York. I wouldn't have progressed. I would have been miserable and I would probably been working some dumb, dead ass end job. But no, I did what I felt like doing and I went for it. And here it is four and a half years later and I absolutely love it here and I'm, I don't regret it at all. You know, I, true indeed, I do miss my family, but you know something? Sometimes we can't always allow people to stagnate us and hold us back. If we do that, we're not going to get no fucking wear. So with that being said, Anna, you do what's good for you. Try them online courses and stop asking your mom for her opinion. 
Because as long as you're asking for an opinion, it's just going to eat you up inside. Stop worrying about what everybody think about you or what everybody feel what you should do sometimes. That's what that's the problem with us these days. Like, we always worried about what people think about us or what's somebody's opinion about us or what's somebody's opinion about what we should do. That's a problem. And I'm going to say it because, you know, sometimes I worry about that shit, too. I'm honest. But then there's the part of me that be like, you know what? Fuck everybody. Just just like on YouTube. <clears throat> Some people might not like what I put out or they might not like the wig or whatever. And I always worry about that. But then it's a part of me that's like, you know what? Fuck them. I don't give a fuck if they don't like it or not. You don't got to watch it. And I don't mean that in a nasty way, but we have to stop allowing other people to be like this huge impact and influence on us, especially if it's not positive. You feel me? So on that note, do what's good for you, Anna. Get them online courses done. See how that makes your grades go up and continue striving for being a pediatric nurse. I think that's great. And I wouldn't even worry about what my mother and my brother is doing because they just going to be together. You know, you ever had that, that family mother and that son and the mother always hovering over the son? Always, always. He can't even have a girlfriend because she hovering over him. You think that she the girlfriend because she always hovering over him. Girl, bye. Now on to the next. Okay. Hmm. So this is definitely going to be the last one because this is the third one, of course, as you guys know. So, hey, April, you gave me advice on another situation a long time ago. I really appreciate you uploading it so fast. I have another problem. So my cousin has started hanging out with a girl I used to be cool with. I told my cousin why me and her, oh, excuse me. I told my cousin why me and this girl stopped being cool. She knew everything. I'm on Instagram and they taking pictures with each other. I had to tell my cousin she was fake for that. She told me, my cousin told me, they were not friends. It was only business because they were with a, photo, a photographer doing a photo shoot with multiple girls. Well, after that, they were still hanging out. <clears throat> I'm so mad and angry that my cousin would be so disloyal to have a friend. Disloyal to me, okay? My ex-friend is 25 and my cousin is 21 and very childish and gullible. I told her she was fake twice for what she was doing to me. I don't want to look like a crazy person and confront her again. And I can't be mad at my old friend because she do owe me no, she doesn't owe me any loyalty. I know the only reason why my cousin is hanging with her is because she has a lot of Instagram followers and she's a model. Well, take pictures because she hasn't hit the runway. So she's an Instagram model. And my cousin wants to do the same thing. Shaking my head. What's your advice, April? Okay, so, Nicole, we're going to call Nicole. Nicole was friends with somebody else, but her cousin Serena, we're going to call her Serena. Nicole's cousin Serena is now friends and hanging out with Nicole's ex-friend, who they just had a fallout. Nicole had already told Serena, listen, that's not my friend no more. Don't hang out with her, yada, yada, yada. She did this, she did that, you know what I'm saying? Serena knows the deal, but... Nicole let her know, but Serena still want to hang out with Nicole's ex-friend because Nicole's ex-friend is a model, you know, an Instagram model. I don't, I don't really understand what a fucking Instagram model is. I mean, I get it. But it's really not relevant, I don't think. Anyway, Nicole is mad with her cousin Serena, because Serena's still hanging out with her ex-friend. They hanging out, they taking pictures, you know what I'm saying? Nicole was like, you just want to hang around her because she's an Instagram model, and you want to do the same thing. Nicole's like, I don't want to seem like the crazy person and confront her or seem like I'm mad or anything, but, you know, I feel like she's not being loyal to me, and she's being fake by hanging out with my ex-friend. Listen, Nicole, listen. Your cousin is a grown-ass girl. If she gullible and foolish and naive, she going to figure that on her, her own. If you didn't already warn her about your friend and already told her how she is and how she get down and your cousin is still hanging around her, then listen, she grown. She going to learn this shit on her own. You cannot pick your friends and you cannot pick your family members' friends neither. If that's who she want to be friends with, let them be friends. But here's the thing what you don't do. Don't sit around with your cousin discussing any of your private affairs and your business because nine times out of ten, if she's trying to be cool and be Instagram, 
grandma and be all up in that girl business, she gonna go tell your business. So allow her to be her friend. You ain't gotta be all crazy, but limit yourself, meaning limit of what you tell her and what y'all do together. If that's who she wanna be friends with, then go ahead and let her be friends. Don't act like that because you know something? What she did to you, what your friend did to you, may not be what she do to your, your cousin Serena. They might just have a different bond, you know what I'm saying? And that, that was your friend. She was your friend. That's past tense. Now, the growing up thing to do would just be to grow up, be a grown woman about your shit, Nicole, and leave her the fuck alone. Meaning, leave her and your friend's relationship, your ex-friend's relationship alone. Don't sit there, keep badgering her. Don't sit there, keep telling her how she fake and she not loyal to you. Because that's the one thing that I can't stand about women. They constantly quick to tell somebody they fake and they not loyal. Okay, now listen. Just because, um, let's see. We friends, me and you best friends, you don't like her for whatever reasons. Don't mean that I don't have to, I don't, I don't have to dislike her. I don't have to dislike her. You know what I'm saying? I just find that to be like tick for tack childish. Like, okay. So me and my cousin Kenya, who we cool with, she got friends that I don't know and I don't like. She ain't never stopped being friends with them because of me. And she got, and I got, and um, she got enemies that. You know what I'm saying? Or not even enemies. People that don't like her, but they like me. And I still speak to them. Just because they don't like my cousin Kenya don't mean I got to be like, oh, you don't like my cousin. She don't like you, bitch. I don't like you neither. Like, I'm not about to do that because that's just childish to me. I find that to be very, very childish. If you don't like her, but you respectful to me, that's cool. But just don't disrespect her around me. And just please just find it in your heart not to disrespect her in general. But I think like sometimes we take shit to the extreme being petty and shit. That That is a little bit petty. If that was your ex-friend, what she did to you is not guaranteed that she's going to do that to your cousin. Your, your cousin might be gullible to a certain extent. Don't Don't think in your heart that she's that motherfucking gullible to where she don't know right from wrong. If she don't want to take your point and advice and not be cool with her, then let her learn on her own. Maybe the outcome of their friendship will not be the same motherfucking outcome as you have with the girl, Nicole. You know what I'm saying? Maybe y'all two clash. You ever think like people clash? You know what I'm saying? Like y'all didn't work out because y'all just attitudes is two totally different people, but your cousin and hers attitudes might be a good enough to where they won't have a fallout like you had. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't smash that. You can't get mad. That's your cousin. That's not your man. That's your cousin, okay? And she's entitled to have friends. She is entitled to have friends that you don't like, just like you are entitled to have friends that she don't like. That don't mean that y'all supposed to go around each other and talk about, oh, you fake, you fake, you're not loyal to me, you're not loyal to me. Let me tell you something. There are many friends that my cousin Kenya had that I did not like. Them bitches was fucking thoughts ratchets and not even worth speaking to okay but that's who she want to be friends with i'm not gonna disrespect them i'm not gonna say oh i don't like them and oh you shouldn't hang out with them because you're not loyal to me that if that's who you want to hang out with cool i'm not gonna hang out with you and them when me and you have our time it's just us and when you have their time it's just you and them but we're not gonna make a group session of this motherfucking shit you understand what I'm saying? So, Nicole, my thing is this to you. Grow the fuck up and let her have her friends. If some shit happens and pops off, then that's her business and she can handle it. But don't stop her from making friends with your ex-friend because of the fallout that y'all had. Like I said, people clash. Um, personalities clash. You don't know that her personality and your ex-friend's personality might not clash and they might hit it off. And if she's just using her to be an Instagram model, then you know what? That's her business, not yours. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got to step back and we got to allow people to see the bigger picture on their own. And sometimes we got to learn how to mind our own motherfucking necks. Meaning mind your motherfucking business. Stop trying to be somebody's motherfucking mother and let that bitch do what the fuck she want to do and grow the fuck up. Seriously. Like on some real shit. I've had other friends that didn't like other people and um. Yeah, they might have expected me not to like their friend, but you know what? I'm a grown ass woman. And if you don't like that bitch, does not mean that I don't have to dislike her. You know what I'm saying? I'm grown. I'm a like who the fuck I'm a like, and I'm a not like who the fuck I don't like. Just because you don't like that bitch and she don't like you, don't mean the bitch don't like me. You got a totally different attitude. And that's the thing. Some of my friends did not like my cousin Kenya. And you know why? It's because her nasty negative attitude. So there. What? Because they didn't like her. I wasn't supposed to speak to them no more. Girl, bye. It's 2018. Some of the things we have to let go. That shit was petty. Let your cousin have friends. Let her take a little Instagram model to the next fucking level and let them hang out. You got friends and I'm pretty sure you have other friends. Your cousin may be your cousin and she might be your friend too. But you know what, sweetheart? If that's the only friend you got, then it's time to mingle and have fun and get out there and meet people. You know what I'm saying? You might find yourself a really good friend who didn't have a fallout with you. Or therefore, then again, 
the fallout that you have, the fallout that you have, your cousin may be able to mend it. All right. And you all can hang out as a group, but don't knock something. Don't just knock it down and try to brush that shit under the motherfucking rug. Let your cousin figure shit out on her own. She grown. And you're right. Don't go like a mad woman and crazy woman to keep warning her. You already didn't told her twice. She grown. Obviously she like hanging around the girl. Just because she's your cousin don't mean she has to be like you. You understand me? So let Nicole how you how you would feel. I just find like it's petty. Like to me, I just find it petty. You understand me? Like I hate that shit. Like when girls have friends and then one girl don't like the another girl from wherever, and so the rest of her friends just be shunning her and snob nosing her and just giving her dirty looks. Like that's so immature. I find that to be so motherfucking immature. Um, like seriously, I really find that to be so immature when women do shit like that. Like there's no reason for that. You know what I'm saying? That's like, if somebody don't like me on YouTube and then her friend don't like me, she come and leave comments that she don't like me. Like, bitch, you don't even fucking know me. What is it that you don't like about me? Okay. Like, I just find it to be petty. And sometimes women just really need to grow up because y'all just be acting like a bunch of fucking teenagers running around here. Like, I don't like her, so Tina, you better not like her neither. Like, we don't do that. As grown women, we don't do that. As human beings, we don't fucking do shit like that. Now, if you jump my motherfucking friend or some shit like that, that's a different, that's a little bit different. I'm going to try to um probably cut your motherfucking head off, but nah. On some real shit, stop being petty. For real. So you guys, um, yes, on that note, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. You know, I am out tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I have a whole bunch of videos that have already been edited for you guys. Like seriously. So that way I'll have continuous videos every single day. So make sure y'all motherfuckers watch them shits. All right. Don't have me be sitting up here on motherfucking days and editing motherfucking videos for y'all bitches. And y'all don't motherfucking watch them. Watch them shits and share them with your friends and family and people you don't motherfucking like. Okay. So. On that note, let me know what y'all think about this wig versus the other bomb one. I love you guys. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, share it with every fucking body, and I will see you guys in the soon to come video.